When you're getting ready in the morning, when you're exercising, or when you just need a little boost. Download Mindset and listen to your favorite motivational speeches while getting ready for the day. I used to be someone that said, you know what, social media is not the problem, it's people, social media simply exposes the issue, which I still believe that. But I have come to a place of seeing how much damage it can cause mm -hmm. in people's relationships. And I do think it's impacting people's ability to appreciate relationships and, and different levels of what we, how we engage with each other compared to what it used to be. It's so different now. People are afraid to heal or people are afraid to face the issues that requires them to heal. So people understand it's painful to go and revisit your past. It's painful to let those emotions you've suppressed all these years come back out. And so now your fear of healing or facing the process of healing is greater than your fear of losing this person. And they think because you're married to them, you're not going anywhere. Yes. So for that reason, that's not enough incentive to face their fear of facing their issues. Wow. The only thing that may get them to do it is the threat of divorce. Wow. But the reality is some people won't get it together until there's a real consequence on the table. And that will be divorce in that situation. The other thing to consider is that some people will never change. They will never heal. And the reality is that the person you're with is the wrong person. And the only reason you got with them is because you were broken. Can you truly be yourself with Ooh, this person? that's big. Because again, a lot of people, they go on these dates, they're bringing their representative, and the chemistry happens on a surface level with the representatives that both sides are bringing. But when you actually show your true self, <laughs> now what happens is can we enjoy each other with no distractions? We, we love going out together and we do all these fun stuff and we're doing all these things. And that's great, all right? We know how to have fun together. But can we be alone in a room, no TV, no distraction, no phone, just us and still love being with each other? Mm. A lot of people can't say that. A lot of people are only able to be in their relationship and tolerate their partner because they have enough distractions in their life. Go on a road trip for at least six hours, no phone, no distraction, just you and them talking. Will you still be happy after those six hours? A lot of people can't make it that far in a car ride with their partner. So you've got to really push those boundaries to see what do we really have here if this is really going to be called a connection. Connection cannot be created nor can it be destroyed. It's either there or it's not. There's nothing you can do to build connection. You can build a stronger bond. You can uh, create a stronger attachment to each other, but that still doesn't mean connection is there. You can't always explain it. Connection does not always line up with the logic of compatibility. It's just there. You just feel something with this person. You feel drawn to them. It's so much deeper than anything you've ever felt. And, and consider this, you can be compatible with tons of people. You can have chemistry with tons of people. You do not feel connection with a bunch of people. People would say arguing is healthy for a relationship. Disagreement is acceptable. Disrespect is not. So my thing is, yes, it's okay and, and even healthy to have disagreements because we have different perspectives. We can bounce ideas off each other. We simply have to know how to navigate that and come to an official decision on things when we have those moments. But arguing says we are being disrespectful, whether our tone is negative, the words that we're using, you know, we're getting loud, we're getting angry, we're, our, we're basically throwing negative energy at our partner. That's not healthy. There's nothing healthy about that. But a lot of people will say that because they want to validate the unhealthiness in their relationship. All it takes is that one really bad argument to plant a seed of negativity that now grows into something worse in the relationship. People have to understand, whenever someone feels attacked, they will defend themselves. Even if they know they're wrong, even if the point you're making is actually solid, the way you're coming at them negates their ability to receive it. So if we're in a relationship, we have to take that approach. If you want them to hear you, be mindful of how you're talking to them. Healing is not a time thing. It's a work thing. So when you hear people say time heals all wounds, no, it doesn't. Time alone doesn't heal a damn thing, all right? It can help. It, it does aid in the process. 
but by itself it is no good you have to take certain steps in terms of recognizing what to heal uh, my first step is is called the who hurt me list so you get a piece of paper you write down a piece of paper who hurt me and now every person who comes to mind you write them down on the piece of paper uh, it doesn't matter how long ago it happened it doesn't matter if you think you've moved past it if you think it's not relevant if they come to mind then there's some level of relevance there put them on the paper in about a sentence or two of what they did to hurt you you know for some people it's gonna get heavy yeah. it's gonna get heavy and that might cause them to want to pause and take a step back but I would encourage them do not like walk away from it completely the first draft is the most important this is where we're gonna have essentially an emotional detox we got to get everything out so let's say on the list is your mother and in that first draft, you're just gonna let all your raw emotion out. I don't care if you curse her out. I don't care if you wish death on her. I don't care what nasty, evil thing you say. However you feel, let it come out. You've got to let the anger, the hurt, all pour out of you into this letter. If you don't know how to start the letter, start it with the most damning thing you can say. This first draft is let it rip. Let it rip, let it out. And I guarantee you by just doing that first draft, you're gonna feel better. You're gonna feel a weight come off your shoulders. You're gonna feel more peace to you. And now read the letter to yourself as if you were them. So put yourself in their shoes and anything that now comes off as a t condescending blatantly insulting you're going to change it you're not changing the message you're just changing your delivery of the message people don't know how to communicate without being negative their tone their delivery is horrible so this letter is gonna help you learn how to take your negative emotions and thoughts and now turn it and reword it into a much more loving positive message so I don't care if you did send it and they never responded I don't care if they sent, if you sent it and they rejected everything you said in it. Because the purpose is your release of all those emotions, all right? And you've got to embrace forgiveness. I have seen amazing things happen because of these letters. Because also understand this, hurt people hurt people. Whether you realize it or not, you have hurt people. In that same mode, the hurt person does not always realize how much they're hurting you. We have to understand that damaged individuals are operating from a very selfish mindset. It's, I'm protecting myself. Think about the person who is overly critical of everyone else. They're not doing it because their intention is to hurt others. They're doing it because they wanna keep the spotlight off of them and to protect themselves from nice. criticism. So I'm gonna hit you before you hit me. So a lot of times this letter basically takes the blinders off. And I've seen situations where the offender has broken down in tears after realizing how bad they were being. But they never connected with that previously because their emotions, their feelings blinded them from that. No one says healing is easy, but it's necessary and it's absolutely worth it. And, and it, it's a game changer. Forgiveness isn't a snap of the finger thing. You could do all of this. You can say, I forgive them. I'm good. I'm moving forward. And like you said, two, three weeks later, something happens and you're triggered. See, the mistake we make is that when we get triggered, we allow ourselves to dive into it. We dwell in that moment. And so now you're, you're staying in that negative place. What you have to do is recognize the moment, say, no, I forgave them. What's done is done. I'm moving forward. And that's it. <laughs>
learn from them, grow, move forward. I would say forgiving ourselves is harder because we live with ourselves. That person can do that one thing and it can be very hurtful, mm. but we may not see them again. But when we make our mistake, we have to live with that. Mm. We have to face ourselves in the mirror. That person may have one offense that we have to forgive them for, but we can end up having several offenses against ourselves. And now it becomes a harder journey for a lot of people to just accept that we're, we're all flawed. And so in life, it's the same thing. Anyone who's successful at life has made mistakes. You're either gonna learn from them or you're gonna dwell on them. And too many people are dwelling in their mistakes. We let life get the best of us and we get busy and we get distracted. And again, doing these exercises isn't easy all the time, but we've got to commit to it. And we've got to commit to understanding if we want the best for ourselves, for our life, for our relationships, we've got to cover all the bases when it comes to healing. What are a few ways to know that your partner truly loves you? Way number one is to evaluate if you truly love them. <laughs> because I, I find that people are so busy trying to analyze the other person and not looking at themselves in the mirror. And so if you are not truly in love with your partner, they're not truly in love with you. True love is a two-way experience, not one way. I think at the end of the day, anyone who's truly in love with someone is at least willing to try to be more open and vulnerable. So the quicker that we can find ourselves and our purpose and embrace that, the better life we can live, the more we can walk on the path that is for us. And to me, everything else falls into place from there. Peace, happiness, love comes when we find ourselves and when we find our purpose. Holding back in life is no way to live. You can be safe and still be vulnerable. There's nothing better than finding yourself, being it, and not giving a damn what anyone thinks.